Hey guys, welcome back. I'm sure you can tell by the state of my hair that it has just been a super humid and hot day here in South Carolina. I got down here the middle of the day, which I don't recommend, bad choice, um, really good for overheating, heat stroke, that kind of stuff. But anyways, I managed to get the rest of my potatoes out and I did end up getting the rest of my onions out that were in the in-ground garden. So I'm happy to report that all of that is done. Nate has been working up at the chicken coops. We ended up getting rid of our golden comets. They were getting just a little bit older, but because I had purchased so many baby chicks this year, um, we really wanted to focus on their health and giving them enough space. And so he is building a bigger chicken house for our Delaware chickens. We kept a rooster and six hens, so he's making them a bigger space. And then we're gonna divide our baby chickens, uh, which actually now are laying, so not quite babies anymore, but we'll divide them between the two coops just to make sure that they have enough space. Um, and then the Delawares will free range for right now. But I'm sure you all can see that I am not in my normal attire. I am not in my signature sweatpants. I'm actually in overalls today. I, I went ahead and made the leap and I decided to go ahead and buy some true work clothes. Now I'm super cheap guys. I've always been a penny pitcher. I have always used coupons at the grocery store. In fact, when Nate and I were first married, I was one of those people that you might have seen on a couponing show where the grocery store would actually pay me um, and I wouldn't have to pay them anything and I'd walk out with a cart full of groceries. So anyways, I've always been a penny pincher, but I have been wanting some good work clothes for quite a while now. And I finally decided to go ahead and buy some on the 4th of July, I saw that Duluth Trading Company was having a sale, and so I went ahead and made the leap, and boy am I glad that I did. These things have so many pockets. Uh, it's fantastic. I can keep all my tools in them, seed packets. I can roll up the bottom of the pants and button them if I want a little more airflow. They're made of a super breathable material, and they also even have a spot for knee pads if I wanted to get some of those. But anyways, guys, it's a world of difference between the sweatpants pants and these overalls. Uh, they're really easy to move in and so I am really glad that I invested in them. But you may be wondering why are we talking about her attire? Why am I telling you about my overalls? And well there is a purpose for that. So in the state of the world today I think that we really need to be able to look around and see what is truly going on. Not just what they're telling us, not just what they're trying to condition us to. Um, you know, not that everything is good, that the job market is strong, that inflation is only 4%. I think you and I are a little bit smarter than that and we can look and see what's actually going on. And so with that being said, I have decided to invest in a few things. I'm not sure if y'all just saw that. My son just hit a golf ball from up in the yard and it literally just went, I'm not even sure, maybe three feet over my head. <laughs> Anyways, I'm still alive. Vincent, don't hit them this way. Hit them that way. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> where was I? With the state of the world and everything, I think it's important that we make provisions for the future. And what I mean by that is making sure that we are investing in things that are going to help us be successful. And so number one on that list probably is going to be food. So if you're growing your own garden, fantastic, but maybe you can grow more. Maybe you can get another garden area. But if you're not, try to make sure that you can have your pantries loaded, have them stocked up as best you can. I like to keep a year on hand. I know that that's not feasible for everybody right now. Prices are super high, um, inflation is crazy, but if you can, guys, just do the best that you can with that, just to make sure that your family is provided for. If you guys have a family, if you have children, if you have grandchildren, guys, we owe it to them to make sure that we're doing all that we can to prepare and make sure that we're ready for whatever comes down the pipeline. After food, I guess I'd have to say water. Um, if you wanna get kind of 
crazy and deep down the rabbit hole, you could say, hey, you know, what's the easiest way to take out a good amount of the population? Well, poisoning the water supply. I mean, never mind that our city water has chemicals like PFAS that cause male infertility and also are linked to kidney cancer. Just forget all of those other chemicals in the water supply. But let's just say that they wanted to poison us. Um, that would be a really easy way to do it. So if you could get a water filter, maybe just life straws, that's sort of an inexpensive way to go. If you have have a body of water on your property, you know, maybe start thinking of these things. You know, how would you get water from that? How would you utilize that so that you could fulfill your water needs um, for a day for your family? Or if you have one of those little pools from Walmart or even a fancy in-ground pool, um, we just have a small one from Walmart, those things will hold like 4,000 gallons of water. So just maybe think about picking up some purification tablets, um, something that you could use to make that water safe for drinking in kind of like a last case scenario, that would be awesome. Now the next thing can get a little touchy guys, and I'm not giving you this advice because I've never been through this, Nate and I have been through this and done this and we know that it's difficult and we know that people don't like to talk about it, but I would highly suggest that if you are able to, that you sit down, you make a budget, and you work really hard to get out of debt. Credit card debt is almost at $1 trillion in America. The average American has between, I think, five to $7,000 in debt, and the credit card interest rates right now are 24%. That's sort of like the average, which is absolutely nuts. I don't even know how long it would take you to get out of debt if you just made the minimum payment, but I'm telling you guys, if you can just allot a little more money to those payments and try to get out of debt, it will take so much weight off your shoulders, so much stress. When Nate and I were first married, we really didn't think much of putting money on a credit card. Hey, we were going to get points. We were going to, you know, go down the street and finance a fancy car. Um, you know, we did all that stuff until we decided that enough was enough. And we did. We had to sacrifice. Um, we had to sell some things. At one point we had a super nice Duramax diesel pickup truck. It was bright blue. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and we sold it. And we sold it because we didn't want to be in debt anymore. So there are sacrifices that you have to make. Maybe if you have some toys like four wheelers, dirt bikes, things like that, you know, think about maybe putting those you know, on Facebook Marketplace before things really kind of take a turn for the worse and people are having a hard time getting rid of them because, you know, people just don't have the money to buy them. So if you guys can do that, I highly suggest it. Um, also, if you do have a car payment, the average car payment in America is like $700 now, which is crazy. Um, I, I can't even imagine. And you can finance cars for, what is it, like 84 months, I think is the biggest term that you can do that for. But it's just crazy, guys. We strap ourselves down with so much debt that, I mean, it is true, the debtor is slave to the lender. You work just to pay somebody a paycheck. I have been driving an old minivan now for about 10 years, um, and it gets me from point A to point B. I think if I put it on Marketplace, it might fetch me $2,500 or $3,000. It's not fancy. It's not worth anything. But I'm telling you what, guys, when I'm driving down the road, you know... <laughs> Nobody's impressed by it, and I really don't care. Because if I was driving something fancy, what are our attention spans these days? 10 seconds? I mean, they're going to forget about me in 10 seconds anyway. So I promise you guys, if you get rid of that fancy car and just get something a little bit more low-key, um, no payments or maybe low payments, if you can do that, you'll be amazed at how much freedom you feel from that and how much extra money you're going to have at the end of the month to put towards things that really, really matter. Um, Nate and I have kind of decided to forego the designer jeans to make sure that we have good quality work clothes. Um, we've decided to invest in good quality mud boots and work boots. Um, just things that are going to make our lives easier. Things that are going to make us more efficient and successful to achieve the goals that we've set for ourselves. Um, also food preservation things. Last year, Oh man, I made all of my marinara sauce without a sauce maker. Um, this year, I bought a sauce maker. Now, it's not a huge investment. It's about $60. But that's going to save me a ton of time. It's going to take my stress levels down a bit, guys. And I promise when my stress level is down, things are happier in the house. And I'm sure it's the same with you guys, especially with so much food coming in. 
it can get really overwhelming. Um, we've also purchased a steam juicer for our grapes this year to help us make grape juice and grape jelly so that I'm not having to deal with the peel and the seeds in those. That's going to be a really big time saver also. Um, we've also invested in quite a few canning jars <laughs> just to make sure we have a good stock of those and canning lids. Nate and I have also decided to start investing in some really good garden tools. Um, things that are made well, that are going to stand the test of time, things that we can pass down to our kids. Uh, because even the cheap items that used to last a couple of years, now I don't know how they make them cheaper, but they are making them cheaper and they are breaking, I mean, within months. And so it doesn't make sense for us to just keep going and buying and spending more and more and more on these cheap items. We want to go, we want to buy something that is quality made and it may cost a little bit more. But we want to start having those things here so that in case they aren't available, we have them to get done the tasks that we need to do, guys. We want to make sure that our kids are provided for. We really want to, you know, steer them in the right direction. We want to show them, you know, what it means to grow your own food, what it means to work hard, what it means to be self-sufficient so that when they are older, they are able to do these things for themselves so that they're not relying on the system like I had to and like Nate had to as we were growing up and becoming adults. We're really trying to invest in our future. We're trying to invest in our kids, guys, because I want to give this next generation the best shot that I can. I want this next generation to rise up and keep this nation a free country. Now, I don't know if we're too far gone. You know, you and I can kind of speculate, but nobody has a crystal ball here. Uh, we don't know exactly where we will be in two months, six months, a year, 10 years. But if we keep heading down this direction, it's not going to be good. It's just a little food for thought. Um, thought I would share with you. I just, I think it's important. I think it's important that we're investing in our future, making sure that we have what we need to be successful and what our kids have to make them successful, guys. Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. The, uh, the sun is setting fast. Hopefully the camera's still picking up some good light here. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and have a great rest of your night.